So with the bigger size horsepower on this one for the 24 roll. As Mike Dorwin looks over his fleet, he's thankful this equipment is now parked instead of running on all cylinders in the field. We were very fortunate this, uh, we had a late April snowstorm, which we thought was gonna really put us behind. And when the weather turned, it, it turned beautiful. Everything dried up awesome. He says on April 14th, 13 inches of snow covered these fields, but things dried up, warmed up. And on May 4th, these tractors were rolling. We were done in about 12 days. Have you ever planted no. that fast? <laughs> it was just two 24 rows. And like I say, we didn't have rain days, so it was nice that way. With little force downtime, they were able to plant 12 days straight. And with equipment slightly used, it's how Dorwin Farms prefers to operate. How we roll equipment. Uh, our previous ones are 14. So if we do upgrade to these now, we're going to be good for, you know, two or three years. So we typically run up to 1,000 hours and then roll them. It's that need to upgrade that drives equipment purchases in an area predominantly driven by large ag. Tractor sales for the most part have been sound. Our four wheel drives have been solid. Our inventory is in great shape. Ruck says halfway through 2018 and it's been a surprising performance for equipment sales. We're looking to see some strengthening in, in some of the used equipment values, which, which has not happened for quite some time. A stronger start that's showing up in more than just Wisconsin. It kind of started again last November. We started seeing an uptick in auction pricing. And I think the underlying root cause here is, is just pent up demand. Pent up demand showing its face on dealership lots after two to three years of a slowdown. I'm kind of seeing it across the board, this strength. It's not isolated to any one particular area. I would say the hottest segment is continuing to be the, the 10 to 20 year old equipment in really good condition, almost whatever it is. Now that's always been a truth in the used market, but it's really accentuated right now. Machinery Pete says this time of year, equipment values typically show a dip, but not this year. And its strength also showing up in the combine market. The latest Association of Equipment Manufacturers report revealing combine sales jumped 50% during May, rising from 213 machines purchased to 323. And so far this year, combine sales climbing 26%. That echoes exactly what I've seen since November on the used combine market. And I, I think the auction market, again, tends to show it earlier. Used combine values lifted late 17 and have held here the first two quarters of 18. So that's been uh, a good sign. Those earlier decisions leading to a 30% jump in combine purchases at Frontier Ag so far this year. It's not a huge number for us because we're so diversified but we've seen some early purchasing in combines that we haven't over the last couple of years. So year over year, we didn't expect that much probably. So it's a bit of an encouraging thing for us coming in through the summer and fall. As combine markets climb, so we have coverage. dairy equipment is facing intense year. pressure. Sure. But our crop of hay still yielded good and the quality was fair. Kent Sheps says while the hay crop looks good, we do all the cropping, all the cropping work. Milk prices have struggled. We contract or hedge milk for the last probably 11 years. So if we can break even on a bad year, that's a good year. And while things like milk prices are out of Shep's control, he wanted to be able to manage what he could on the farm. So he purchased his first forage harvester a decade ago. We were getting more acres and more acres, and we just wanted to have more control. And we had a custom operator, which he did a fine job. But it was just like we had enough help on the farm and it just it was a fit for us. He says he's happy he did. This unit will hang on for, I would say, is roughly 500 hours on it right now. If we get 12, 1500 hours on, we'll probably upgrade. Frontier Ag and Turf says their customer base is 50-50. Half are custom harvesters, while the remaining half harvest their own feed. This is a forage harvester side. That continues to be a challenge for us with dairy being where it is and the cost of improving that efficiency. That's going to be our biggest challenge through the balance of the years, the forage harvester side. But Machinery Pete says it's those challenges that can create opportunities if you're in the position to buy. To me, it's an opportunity area. You know, all you have to do is look at our website. There's, there's quite a few self-propelled uh, choppers available. And when they show up at auction, you know, again, it's a great opportunity if you're able. For both Dorwin and Sheps, it's adding efficiency while trimming costs where they can, helping them weather the uncertainties of agriculture so far in 2018.